In this Ticket Bud tutorial, we're looking at ticketing. We'll run through creating different ticket types, managing ticket quantities and event max capacity. We talk a little bit about ticket programming, including scheduling things like early bird sales. We'll also cover group ticketing, adding donation options and creating lock tickets. We finish by having a quick look at where you can create complementary tickets and record offline sales, as well as giving a quick intro into creating custom questions. Let's dive in. As part of the getting started checklist when you first create an event, you are asked to add tickets to your event. We took you into the ticket editor, which you can get to from your event dashboard menu. You can also get there from your event page editor. You just need to click on this box here to edit tickets and that will take you into the ticket editor. As a reminder, you go into add ticket, give the ticket type a name here, then the ticket price. This is the amount you want to receive as the organizer. Our system will calculate the fees and let you know what the total ticket price will be that the customer pays. If you want to set the price that the customer pays, you can do that here. It will simply adjust the amount that you receive as the organizer. You have the option to add a quantity limit for this particular ticket type if you wish. This is helpful if you wanted to offer a limited number of tickets as part of an early bird sale, for example. If you set this for 100 early bird tickets, then once you sell 100 tickets, it will no longer be available. There are a lot of different strategies when it comes to ticketing that you can implement to help you sell more tickets. We will go into this more in a separate video on ticket programming. For now, I'll give a few simple examples. Different ticket types you might want to think about are early bird or flash sale tickets to try and encourage people to buy tickets earlier. Incremental tiered pricing, which is slowly increasing the price of tickets in the lead up to an event. Premium pricing with options such as platinum, gold and silver tickets in addition to general admission. There are also audience segment tickets like adult, senior, student or child prices. Ticket bundles or packages such as family or group tickets. And then there are add-on experiences that you can offer in addition to an entry ticket. So let's look at how we can set up an early bird ticket alongside a general admission ticket. Let's add a ticket type. This one is going to be an early bird ticket. If my general admission ticket price is going to be $40, then I might make my early bird price $30. Now you don't have to restrict quantity because you can just have this cut off based on a certain time. Then save changes. Now that you've created an early bird ticket type, let's click the gear icon to go into ticket settings for that ticket type. So here you can add a description for this ticket type that gives people a little more information about it. So be as clear as possible. You can choose here whether you want this description to be displayed on the web and on the PDF ticket. The ticket description will appear like this below your ticket options with a view more information link. If you had put a maximum limit on this ticket type, you have the option here to show ticket buyers how many remaining tickets there are by checking this box. This is completely up to you, but if you have a lot of tickets remaining, it will lessen the sense of urgency, so keep that in mind. The group ticketing allows you to set a minimum and maximum tickets per purchase. So if you only wanted people to be able to buy up to six tickets per transaction, you can set that up here with the minimum being one and the maximum being six. Alternatively, if this was a charity dinner where you had to purchase a table of 10, you could say tickets have to be purchased in groups of 10. So if our event is in October, we might start our early bird sale in the beginning of August at 8 a.m. and let it run for three weeks. So that would finish on the 22nd. We could even add this in our description back up here. This is a discounted early bird ticket, only available until August 22nd at 8 p.m. That way everyone knows how long this is going to be available. Here in settings, you can also add sales tax and any additional custom fees you wish to include on this ticket type. Then save changes. So with the early bird ticket all set up to be on sale for three weeks, we now need to set up the general admission ticket to come on sale when the early bird closes. So now we add a general admission ticket. We decided that this would be $40 and we aren't going to limit the number of these tickets. Now let's jump into settings on our general admission tickets by clicking on the gear icon again. Here we add the description, then come down to the sales schedule. Now you want this to kick in right after your early bird finishes. So GA goes on sale August 22nd at 8 p.m. and is available until event day, in this case that's October 10 at 7 p.m. Remember to save these changes. Ticket buyers will just see the total ticket price per ticket at the checkout. If you want them to see the breakdown of the ticket price and the fees, then check this box here. Notice the maximum capacity over here. This is the total number of tickets you can sell regardless of the ticket type. This would be your venue or fire code limit. It stops you from overselling past your capacity. Once this number is reached, it will close all sales. 
If a capacity is reached on a specific ticket type, it only closes the sales on that ticket type. So that's the distinction to be aware of. You can also add donation options here, which just requires a title, and then they can add the amount that they want to donate. Donation fees cannot be set to be absorbed. Fees will be added on top of the donation amount. As I said earlier, there are a range of other ticket types you can create. You might want to add a parking ticket, for example. You can also create locked tickets that require an access code. This could be used for sponsor or partner tickets, for example. Access and discount codes are something we go into a little more in another video when we look at how to use promotional codes. If you want to create complementary tickets for your event, you will need to go into orders to manage that. Here, you have the ability to add comp tickets as well as record offline ticket sales. To add comp tickets, click here. Free comp tickets can be manually issued to an individual attendee, or you can issue comp tickets in bulk by uploading a list in CSV format. There are no fees for comp tickets, but they are included in reporting and factored into your capacity restrictions. And finally, you can create custom questions that you want to ask ticket buyers. Just click here and add a question. You can make it required or not, and the answers can be free text, drop down, or radio buttons. Then you select the ticket types you want the question applied to, or all of them, and create question. Next, check out our tutorial on how to create custom ticket layouts.